so yeah, this presentation is kind of a feedback of how we use uh, Open Nebula in uh, bonfire projects, so European project, and especially how we customize it so that it can fit better with our infrastructure and use case. Use case. So first, a few things just about me. I'm French system engineer, so working at the INRIA research laboratory. Working mainly on the Bonfire Euro European project, uh, we, and we also work with Open Nebula inside this project. So some Open Nebula developers are involved in the project so that can develop a few custom things for, for Bonfire inside Open Nebula. I'm also a free software addict, so just use, use contribute, and uh, extra a lot of uh, free software, so a lot of Puppet, Nadjo, Sorry Singa, or sometimes Abix, or everything, and a lot of other, other tools, Jenkins, for the continuous integration. I'm on my, on my free time uh, system administrator on the French Ubuntu community. So the uh, different website, forum, documentation, etc. So two links if you want some more information. The first one is mainly French, sorry for that. Well, <coughs> so Bonfire is, say it quickly, so the official description on the website says that this is a project with aims at delivering a robust, reliable, and sustainable facility for large-scale, experimentally-driven crude research. So this is uh, some aggregation of different testbed, different prov cloud providers. So Open Nebula is one of them, but we also have VMware, we also have HP proprietary solution, we also have a few other things. The main goal is to help researchers, experimenters, so to provide uh, facilities so that they can try their new developments and new research on cloud and mainly on different clouds. So with a common API, so they can just use Bonfire and choose if they want VMware or OpenNebula or whatever. They will have this, uh, the same API for everything. One of the main features of Bonfire is the improved monitoring. So that's something for the research and something which is really important for researchers is that they need to understand what happened. And in the clouds, it means, for example, to be able, when they have their VM, they, uh, with this, they have access to the hypervisor monitoring. So they can't do anything on the hypervisor itself, but they have all the metrics so they can understand why a VM suddenly goes more slow or have some disk issue or something like that. So as said, Open Nebula team project is involved in one fire, so mainly to try to, to make a CCI works as we expect to, uh, to do and uh, and had some, some extra feature. So there are up to four test beds that use Open Nebula in, uh, in Bonfire. Uh, three are just basic, let's say, Open Nebula infrastructure. Another one is customized, uh, especially about the network. So a bit more technically, Bonfire is this. So basically, you have the test bed on the, done on the stack, and you have a couple of services. So the resource manager is the main entry point for users. So there is a REST API uh, on it, which is basically OCCI. And we have an inector which tries to convert the OCCI generic OCCI, we use it to be understood by the different test beds. So 
the whole, whole the test bed of OCCI interface. Of course, all of the test bed of different kind of OCCI implementation. So we just try to, 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 to do the, the, the change in the inector so that the test bed can understand everything correctly. We have a web portal and an experiment manager, which is another web interface, which they just basically connect to this API. So the users can use some graphical interface, but they, they can also script everything. We provide, uh, because this is a RESTful interface, we provide uh, especially RESTfully, which is a Ruby tool, which allows to kind of ORM, ORM, so which just uh, allows the users to use the REST API just, have just as objects, Ruby objects. So yeah, OCCI is just used from here to the test bed. The monitoring data are collected through ZBix. So each test bed have their own ZBix, and each experiment started by researcher have one ZBix instance to collect everything they need for the ex experiment. So we export list of metrics to the experimenter. So basically, when a VM starts on a given node, uh, the ZBix, which is included inside the experiment, automatically fetch all the metrics uh, or the data uh, from the hypervisor so so that the experimenter can better understand what uh, what happened so each test bed has a local administrative domain so we don't share administration a lot between different domains which means that each test bed each partner chose one one or many technologies so open nebula with then RKVM, uh, VMware for the etc. etc. If you want more information or if you want to try Bonfire, you can. So on the main website, you have an open access uh, link. So just click and you need to register, fill some form, and you can have an access on Bonfire. So Open Nebula, it, well, Bonfire is just connected to the Open Nebula testbed using the OCCI interface. So we don't use Sunstone or things like that at all. We mainly use the main Open Nebula daemon, the OCCI server, and that's almost all. The OCCI interface uh, of Open Nebula has been patched for to support few extra features and group management and uh, things like that. We also have custom hooks which publish information on message queue, so basically trigger when a VM start or stop or things like that. Inside Bonfire, this is a research project which this is support for research. So this is not basic cloud service where you start VM for weeks. Uh, we have kind of different life cycle workflow. Uh, the researcher usually starts a few VM at a time, but they have really short lifetime. So between a few hours to a few days, sometimes up to two weeks, but that's all. We don't have a VM that stay for years. But uh, because this is experiment, uh, and uh, Basically, you, when you deploy something, when you try to experiment something, you just want to do the test again and again and again. So you need to deploy a lot of VM again and again and again. So we have a lot of deployments, but we, have, we don't have many different base images. So the, we have basically three or four base images managed by the, by the bonfire team, and the user has their own one, but the, the main three base images are used, let's say, 90% of the time. So yeah, this is kind of different usage of the cloud infrastructure. So very short lifetime, few hours, few days. A lot of VM need to be deployed, so this is something like 10 or 15,000 per month, something like that. 
So yeah, basically, we have the bonfire services we saw on the previous slide, the CCI interface, OpenNebula daemon, different OpenNebula services, and the hypervisor. I think that everybody here knows that how OpenNebula is built. So this is binary, this is C, C++ code. We can't really manage to change it, at least not easily. All these are basically shell or maybe Ruby scripts sometimes. So we can change this if we need. Our infrastructure, so I think some of you know how European project works. Basically, you don't have a lot of money to buy hardware. So you don't have a uh, thousand of euros to buy a big sun or things like that. So in a project like Bonfire, I don't know the exact amount, but for the whole project, I think we have something like maybe 10,000 euros for the whole infrastructure, 10 or 15, but not really more. So we can't have a lot of things. We can't have uh, expensive network, expensive disk array, etc. So well, our infrastructure now is basically built with five servers, one kind of disk server. So this is just a Dell server with a few eight, eight uh, drive. Six core, 48 giga of RAM, etc., and just four gigabytes Ethernet. So no high bandwidth, no low latency networks, things like that. And the four workers, this is just one Dell blade uh, with, so one server with a four inside. So each one has 64 giga of RAM, small disk, but enough for, for our usage, and let's say a lot of processor. So with this, we have uh, some good points, let's say. One is that the inside the experiment, they don't use a lot of networks. So we don't have big network, big capacity, but we don't have really the need for this. So this server, the first one, is big enough to, be to have virtualization, to have VM on it, so we can put a few service VM on it, mainly the open nebula front end. So we don't need to use uh, one of the four servers for this. Each worker is running Zen. Uh, this has been decided uh, at the start of the project. We now probably won't would like to move to KVM, but anyway. And we use LVM backend because mainly we like LVM because we have the snapshot capability, etc. And we have enough RAM capacity on different servers so that we can host a few VM, but we can also benefit of big caches, etc. Drawbacks mainly that we don't have a lot of efficient disks. So we can't basically do a big NFS, big shared file system. We don't have much time in such a project with kind of short term project. We don't have much time to try to deploy safe backend, for example, which takes a lot of time because not really production ready yet. And anyway, we don't have a lot of nodes, so safe on five nodes is not really interesting. As said, we have no, la no low latency uh, network. We have no high bandwidth network, etc. Just basic Ethernet. We only have a few servers for the VM. And uh, these servers, the big one, is also shared with other parts of the our infrastructure. So previously, before this blade, we had whole servers that we just took from another project, which was which were the small servers, so four giga of RAM, little disk space, not a lot of CPU. So when we had this. We were able to use uh, 
customize a bit SSH so that we had local cache for the images. So basically, what we did was to use LVM. The first time an image is used on a node, we just upload it on the node and then create a snapshot for the VM. And all the next time the same image is used on the same host, we just had to create a snapshot. So that was just one or two seconds to, to deploy. That was fast boot process. We didn't use a lot of network, but if you ever try to use snapshot in on LVM, this is fine when we have one or two snapshots. If you have ten snapshots used and writing on them, you just have no performance. You that's just catastrophic. We had an issue with the cache coherency, so when we update the images on the base host, we have some housekeeping to do, etc. etc. So the second one, what we want was basically to lower the deployment time because we deploy often new VMs. So we want efficient copies for the network. We want uh, the OpenWF front-end to be host on the same server as the disk because we don't, have we don't want to get one of the four blades we have just for this. We would like to try to benefit from file system cache, etc. We would like to use LVM as backend for snapshot, for example. We would like, we have, okay, Ethernet, but four, four links per server, so we would like to use the bonding, if possible, to optimize. And if possible, we would like to avoid to copy the image when it's persistent in Open Nebula. So this is basically how the NFS shared uh, transfer manager works. But Open Nebula by default doesn't have any transfer manager to copy locally and manage LVM. This is either the SSH or the copy a plain file or cluster LVM that require a big disk, etc. Has said we can't do anything on the main daemon, main open nebula daemon. We don't need anyway. But we can act on the different MADs. So creating a new one for those who didn't check the source is just creating a new directory wi with five uh, different scripts. So what's wrong with the existing transfer manager? The SSH, well, it uses SSH. Try to copy files through SSH. This is not the most efficient way to do, at least if you want to have some speed. Because our Open Nebula VM is in our Open Nebula front end is inside a VM, which is itself on the disk uh, server. If you use SSH when you, you need to deploy a VM, an image, you first need to load the image from the disk, load it on the VM, then put it back on memory and network. So that's just useless. You need one SSH connection for each transfer and each command and whatever. So again, this is consuming. So you can optimize with SSH master or things like that, but well. And because this is one new connection per transfer, you don't have any cache benefits. What's wrong with NFS for all use cases is that basically you need very strong network and hard drive filers, etc. if you want to use it. So it's fine when you read the images, but if you start writing on the VM, that's with such hardware, just crash everything and you have no performance at all. So, okay, more technical parts. Let's try to customize. So we created your own transfer manager. So basically we created a new directory with these four files. This is the link one is the same that NFS and we rewrote the three others. So how did we improve? We tried to hover the SSH for the copy. So we had at least two solutions. The first one is netcat, so you don't have encryption, this is faster, but this is just a mess to have to set up netcat with a dedicated port for each copy, etc. So not really use, 
usable. The other one is NFS, so you just have an NFS share and you copy from it to, uh, to your nodes. This is what we do. We'll try also to avoid SSH common if possible, because you have to establish SSH connection, etc., so that's slower and use CPU, etc., that's not really needed. And we'll try to benefit many of NFS uh, cache. So both on the server and on the clients. And also, we optimize the network. So I said, the blade have uh, two links, two Ethernet links. The disk has four Ethernet links. <coughs> so what we did, a NFS server, so this server basically just have NFS to export the images. So the images are exported on the front end, which is just a VM on the server, and to the different blades through the networks. Just basic NFS mount. Each blade just mounts the directory, so this is like the NFS transfer manager. But what is different is that we don't write directly the images on the NFS. We just get them from NFS and copy uh, on, the, on each blade. Or in case of persistent image, we just do symbolic link. So this is the only case where, where we write on the NFS. Almost all the commands, so directory creation, etc., are done directly on the NFS share from the front end, so we don't open a new SSH connection each time. Basic difference between the default SSH transfer manager, so just to copy what is needed to boot a VM, you have to first open SSH to create a directory, copy the image, open SSH to create another directory for the context, copy the context, finally do yet another SSH connection. So blue is basically SSH connection, red is SSH HCP, so SSH copy. So basically, for one deployment, you need two copies of SSH and three other sessions for the commands. We are with our custom transfer manager, the first one is a local MACD, so NFS then just spread uh, the directory and the clients. We create the LV, the LVM LV on the worker. We used SSH just to run the copy, so we don't use SCP, we don't encrypt the image, we just run a SSH command to say, okay, copy from the NFS mount point to the local LVM. We create the symbolic links on NFS, and we also create the context ISO on NFS. So basically, with the default one, three SSH connection, two encrypted copy. In our setup, copies through SSH is just 15 megabytes per second. And you have no improvement, no cache benefits, etc and you use a lot of CPU when you have parallel copy, especially. With our custom transfer manager, we just have one SSH connection, we have no encrypted copy, and the copy from NFS basically are between 110 and 120 megabytes, so we hit the network limit. The results, so finally, what we have now in the current setup, with a scheduler, bit customized, so it starts every 10 seconds, can deploy up to 30 VMs per run and up to 3 VMs per host at each run. To deploy one of our base image, so 700 megabytes, it takes 13 seconds from the submission, well, from the active state, so the scheduler just puts the VM in deployment to running. So it means it takes at most uh, 23 seconds between the submission and the time you have the, your VM running on a node. The image copy itself just takes seven seconds, and we see here that we almost hit uh, the network limit, so the Ethernet gigabit limit. With four VMs at the same time, so I submit four VMs, because of optimization of the network, because we have carefully chosen different IPs for the blade so that the network is optimized, the four links are used. 
we only need 17 seconds to deploy the four VMs. So this is just four more seconds at for one. So almost, almost no overhead. And the transfer is almost at the maximum capacity each time. So this is just to finish small graphic of the deployment of the four VMs. So each caller is one Ethernet link. And because of the high peak carefully chosen, you can see that at the same time, we have all the links that use 120 megabytes. To conclude, with no extra hardware, with pretty cheap hardware, we just optimized uh, we part of the Open Nebula to, to fit our case, so deploy often a lot of VM, but short lifetime, etc. We try to reduce the contention on SSH, so it speeds command a little bit, especially if you have a DNS reverse or lookup, etc. It can take a few seconds to create SSH connection. We reduce the CPU use because we don't encrypt. We remove the SSH bottleneck on encryption. That's almost the same. We improved almost by eight the deployment time between the default SSH transfer manager and all man transfer manager. And thanks to the network config, we optimize parallel deployment so, can, so that we can benefit of the four links at the same time and have, can have parallel deployment with almost no impact between them. All this without expensive hardware, expensive NFS server, etc. So a blog post has been done for this. I hope we will contribute this on the Open Nebula stuff ecosystem at some point. That's all. Thanks for your attention. And uh, if you have questions, <laughs> perfect. Yep. Yeah. No, so the question is that do we compress for base images? So in fact, we have three or four base images. The smaller one is a 700. They are not compressed. We could compress, but it takes some CPU to, to uncompress this. So because the network is pretty high, pretty efficient, we don't yet compress. So we have 700, 2 gigabytes, and 10 gigabytes. So we could try to compress, especially the 10 gigabytes. Okay, so the question is how do we handle formatting of VM inside the deployment, etc. So the point is that we have the base image that are formatted first, so when we create the image, and then we have just the LVM logical volume, so we have no extra format at the deployment time. The image is ready, we just copy it on the logical volume, start it, and then contextualize everything with quiet big contextualization scripts. So we especially have all the monitoring stuff, etc., which is enabled or not, uh, just using contextualization. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what about feature okay, so one of the reasons we use LVM is because of snapshot feature. Another one is just that we used to use the LVM everywhere on our infrastructure, so that was kind of a choice. One of the issues is that we are using Zen, and QMU supporting Zen is not that good. <laughs> so I think there is kind of support in the latest version, but
Okay, so, yeah, so, so the question is if we did some benchmark between the Netcat setup and uh, the NFS setup copy. So we did not real benchmark. We tried with Netcat. We have almost the same performance as NFS. But the issue with Netcat is that each time you need to copy, you need to do a SSH connection, set up a Netcat to listen on some port, so you have to decide, choose a port, etc. Then do the copy, shut down the Netcat, etc. So the performance are almost the same, but you have some extra tasks to do uh, to set up everything. So this is not so easy that, than NFS. And I think we, okay, right now we hit the disk, uh, the network limit, so we can't really see if we benefit of cache uh, from the server point of view. But uh, I think that NFS will handle this much more gracefully than Netcat. Maybe one last question? No? Thank you. Thank you.